So I'm here at the Witch Secret Labs, and I'm joined by Witch TV expert Mike Briggs. So Mike, 3D TV, you know, it's a new product, must be very challenging to test for the first time. What sort of things did you experience? Well Ben, this is the first time we've tested 3D TVs, and the, the objectives for our day were one, find out which is the best 3D TV on the market today, and two, how best to test those in our regular tests going forward. Now, as you imagine, loads of problems thrown up by that. First one was getting hold of the tellies themselves. Um, markets have hardly been deluged with new 3D TVs. We managed to get Panasonic and Samsung, but we had to take some directly from LG, one of which didn't even come with a stand, so we got the lab to jimmy that up. Now, apart from the problems getting the TVs, we also have problems uh, finding the material to watch. Now, we've got one 3D Blu-ray movie, Monsters vs. Aliens, and we managed to get some material off Sky, um, but that's about it. Now, once the test got going, we've also had some uh, practical problems there. Normally in our viewing tests we have them all, all the TVs switched on at the same time and our viewers watch them and flip between each TV. This time we could only really watch one or two at a time. Problems with the glasses interfering with each other, they send out infrared signals from the TVs. So you've watched a load of 3D content on a number of different models. You must have identified the difference between a good 3D picture and a bad 3D picture. Well, a lot of the 3D pictures we're looking at, we're, look, we're looking for a lot of the same things. You're looking at regular picture, so we're looking at smoothness and movement. We're looking at uh, detail in dark areas. Um, that, that's what we look for on HD and SD as normal. But there's certain things that are accentuated by the fact that it's 3D um, and by the fact that you have to put glasses on. Now, the glasses can make things look very dim, so we have to make special, uh, special assessments of the brightness of the picture and how it copes with uh, the dimness of the glasses, how it copes with um, having the lights put on, do the glasses cut out the strobing light in the background. Um, then there's also things which are unique to 3D that we're looking for, the, the depth of the picture, which is you know the, it has the biggest impression on people. Um, that's at the top of the list. But also things like the, which are unique, like crosstalk, which is where the two images that you're seeing side by side, which are sent to each glasses lens, where sometimes they overlap each other and it causes a ghosting effect. Now we've seen that on quite a few TVs, but not all. Um, and, and practical things like how comfortable are the glasses to wear, um, how easy are they to use, how easy is it to use the menu system when, you, when you're stuck in 3D. On some of the TVs we found you couldn't adjust the picture when you were watching in 3D. So first up was the Panasonic 50-inch Plasma, the VT20, it's their flagship model. Um, great 3D picture, really strong on depth, a natural looking depth, rich colours, nice resolution, um, good smooth movement as well. Slight problem with picture noise, um, and the picture is quite dim as well, which is not unusual for a plasma. Um, so if you turn the, uh, the lights on, that can be a little bit of an issue. One of the main things we found with the Panasonic though were the, were the terrible glasses. They were really uncomfortable to wear, really clunky, and let quite a lot of light flicker in at the side. So we also had the 47-inch LD920 from LG. Now this is um, the uh, pub version of the LD950, um, which we couldn't get hold of in time for uh, testing, but we will as soon as it's out. Now the best thing about this TV was the fact it was a passive set, which meant you got these uh, really cheap glasses. It came with half a dozen, they cost about a pound each, um, so a lot better than the active shutter glasses, which cost about 100 on the other sets. Um, they're also easier on the eye as well, so our, our our panel found it uh, a nice experience, a nice subtle experience watching this uh, um, LG passive set. Don't quite have the wow factor of some of the other TVs. The 3D effect is slightly muted, the picture is slightly softer, but it does look quite natural and like, like I say, it's quite easy on the eye. So you've probably seen adverts for LG's um, other set, the Infinia, where we had the, um, the huge 55 inch LX9500 on test. Um, and basically it was the worst 3D TV in the test. Um, plus points were the glasses weren't too bad to wear. Uh, minus points, we, yeah, there was jerky motion, um, there was ghosting on all the pictures, lots of crosstalk, um, we saw lots of picture noise. It really, it didn't impress our experts one little bit. So we had a, a Sony Bravia set on test as well, the 40-inch uh, HX803. Um, uh, yeah, good 3D TV performance. It had um, a nice natural look to it, some nice depth, uh, good 3D effect, um, resolution was good, detail was good. 
felt slightly layered and not quite as natural as the Panasonic on some sequences. Um, and like the Panasonic, the, uh, the active shutter glasses were, were a pain to wear and very uncomfortable. And we have some problems with uh, light flicker on that one as well. And finally, we had a couple of Samsungs in the test as well, the 55-inch uh, C8000 and the 40-inch C7000. Now, um, again, 3D wow effect is, is immediate when you turn these TVs on. Um, we found them really bright, really colourful, um, really sharp and detailed. Um, all the things you'd expect from some top-of-the-range Samsung TVs. On the downside with the 3D effect, we did find more ghosting, more crosstalk. Um, on than on say the Panasonic or the Sony, but not quite as bad as the LG Infinia, um, and also the glasses. Well, they, they were they were probably okay. They're probably the best active shutter glasses we actually uh, we actually wore on the day. But out of all those um, for 3D TV picture, it was the Panasonic that was the best one on the day. So Mike, just because that's got the best 3D picture doesn't mean it's the best TV. That's spot on, Ben. Now, we've tested all these TVs for the 3D picture, but we'll also put them through our regular tests. And there's one of these 3D TVs that's actually a cracking 2D TV and um, one of our highest scoring best buys ever. Well, that sounds really in-depth and really interesting, Mike. Thanks. Now, if you want to find out which of these 3D TVs is the best all-rounder, then go to our website at which.co.uk forward slash 3D TV. You'll also find there lots of information about how 3D TVs work and tips on buying one. You better make sure that you read the reviews though, because at a couple of thousand pounds a pop, you're going to want to make sure that you get the best one.